Good evening, everybody. I'm Beth Finnerty, president of Skyland Trail, and I want to welcome all of you to the fourth annual Dorothy Chapman Fuqua Lecture. They're going to share their stories of struggling with, accepting, and overcoming mental illness. My hope is that through the sharing of their stories, our extra special guests might continue to chip away at the barrier of stigma that continues to prevent many individuals with mental illnesses from securing timely and effective treatment, such as the evidence-based and respectful care offered here at Skyland Trail. So please join me as we imagine and participate walking in their shoes. First, it's my pleasure to introduce Melody uh, Moisey. Melody Moisey is a writer, an attorney, a speaker, an activist, a United Nations global expert, and an award-winning author. Most importantly, perhaps, Melody has something in common with many of you here tonight. Melody is a graduate of Skyland Trail and thriving. Welcome, Melody. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, especially since I actually was a patient here. The saddest part about being on a locked ward isn't being locked in a strange and sterile place. It's being locked out of the rest of the world. Stephen, a Vietnam vet on our floor, had asked if he could vote that day. One of the nurses laughed at him. This man had served his country and was now paying a huge price for it, and yet he wasn't even allowed to basic exercise his most basic civil right. <laughs> CNN kept flashing this number across the screen for people to call and report if they'd had trouble voting or witness any voting irregularities. I wanted to call them and tell them about Stephen, but then I realized how futile it would be. Imagine, hi CNN, I'm a bipolar Iranian girl in the 7th floor psych ward of Haven Hill Hospital in Dayton, Ohio. There's a patient who fought in Vietnam here and they won't let him vote, and he also thinks he's Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> they wouldn't let me if I wanted, but... Shortly thereafter, however, I did start visiting the CNN Center in Atlanta on a fairly regular basis. Not knowing anything about my psychiatric hospitalizations less than a year earlier, producers happily booked me as a sane and knowledgeable commentator on issues related to Iran and Islam. With every new interview, I felt myself gaining a little credibility, and with each new ounce of perceived clout, I imagined that the next time I ran into another Stephen, I might be able to amplify his voice just enough to get someone on the outside to listen. And that's why I wrote this book. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. Unfortunately, the level of stigma that exists makes it so much harder to live with these illnesses. I fully believe that they are more, that the stigma is far more debilitating than any singular mental illness. The reason I'm doing well isn't just because of my medication, and mostly I don't think it's because of my medication. It's because I'm not carrying the weight of this giant secret on my back everywhere I go. Uh, I'm not ashamed of it, and that, that I think is what needs to change. And I think what also needs to change in order for us to get a vote, because the people with mental illness in general don't get a vote, because we are so quiet. Uh, and so ashamed. And for that to change, we need to raise our expectations for ourselves and for our mental health providers. When I say raise your expectations for, your, for yourself, it's basically because we are capable. And the definition of having a mind that works differently, whether it's because you have bipolar disorder or depression or schizophrenia or autism or dyslexia or whatever it is that makes your mind work different, it means that you can solve problems other people can't. And that's one thing. So we have problems that, that other people might not have, but we can solve problems that other people can't. That's pretty amazing. Thank you so much, Melody. Your strength is encouraging and palpable and inspiring. And I thank you so much for sharing your, your story with us. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you our next speaker, um, Kevin Briel. As a writer, Kevin has contributed to the Huffing Huffington Post and CNN. As a stand-up comic, he's one of the youngest performing acts in Canadian history. As a mental health advocate, Kevin's been on many media outlets, including the Canadian Broadcasting Company, MTV, The Today Show, and on NBC. His TED Talk, entitled Confessions of a Depressed Comic, went instantly viral online. From Vancouver, Canada, here's Kevin Briel. Ha! 
Hello, Atlanta. Uh, hello, everyone at Skyland Trail. How you doing? It's Kevin Briel, and I didn't really have the desire to go on living this way because it wasn't a life. It just felt like this lie. It just felt like this thing I was making up, and it just felt like I was running away from everything that was true and trying to trying to convince people, trying to even maybe convince myself that things were better than they were. And so that night on February 26th, I sat in my room with a suicide note. And I was really convinced that that was gonna be the last night that I was alive. And fortunately, I, I didn't make the mistake of ending my life. I was able to take a second in that sort of moment and. I remember very clearly reading through the, the note that I had written and reading all these things that I sort of bled out onto this page. And the common denominator amongst it all was that on that page, on that suicide note, were all my secrets. It was all my secrets. And those secrets were slowly crushing me. They were this weight that was just pulling me down. And I had this thought that came into my head that just said, I can't quit on myself if I never try and help myself. And I didn't even know what helping myself would look like. I just knew that it would probably look like me starting to tell the truth, starting to be honest with myself more than anything, and then with others. Hey, Kevin, thank you. Um, the theme, one of the themes that came out of your, your talk and the talk that we heard before was um, change in what's out there, demanding change, raising expectations for mental health care. Um, and you've gotten a lot of feedback from all over the world. So what, how would you summarize the changes that you think need to happen in care? And so I think that it would just be amazing to see more and more communities rally behind the stories of encouragement. Because I think we have this tendency to shy away from the really painful stories, which is natural. But I think at the same time, we also don't do a good enough job socially embracing the stories of people who, hey, I deal with this, but I'm, I'm working through it. And I think there's so many stories like that, from the single mom to you know the guy who works at a bank to an athlete to anyone. I just think that's really something we're missing. And then on the actual care side, I think there just needs to be continually more and more emphasis put on the fact that this, this issue, these topics, it might just need more and more marketing. And I use that word marketing in the sense of just more and more social awareness because I say a lot at colleges, it doesn't really much matter if there's a thousand counselors outside that door if none of you are comfortable enough to have that conversation. You know, and so I think that just needs to be a continual dialogue that says, hey, if you come into counseling, this is what you can experience. Because I think people have this very misconception. You know, people review movies they've never seen when it comes to counseling. You know, they're scared of the unknown. They don't know what it's going to be like. They don't. So they avoid it because it's the unknown. And I think that as long as if we can continue to sort of push forward this idea of like, what is it really like? And people's lives are changing here. And amazing sort of redeeming things are happening. That's only going to encourage and inspire more and more people to get the help that they need. And that's what I really think is at the root of this problem. It's how can we as individuals act as a bridge between someone who's hurting and someone who can help? How can we bring those two things together? Here, here. Hey, Melody. Hey. Um, I really enjoyed your talk as I Thank enjoyed you. your book, Hal Dahl and Hyacinth, which you read from tonight. My question is, you essentially came out in that book. Yeah. You know, you told the world what you are. And do you think, in general, that's a good idea? Should someone, like, put, you know, I've got a, I've got a business degree and I'm bipolar when they're applying for a job, or <laughs> if you get a new Facebook friend, you know, say, what's your sign, by the way, I'm bipolar. Yeah. You know, what yeah. level of anonymity should one keep or not keep, and what situations do you think yeah. they should keep or not keep it? I think that's a great question. Uh, I think it depends on your situation. It depends on your family. And coming out can be just to one person. You know, it doesn't have to be to so many people, and you don't have to go on CNN and do it. You know, you can actually do it in smaller ways. But to do it in, yeah, obviously, I, I wouldn't necessarily send it, although you are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. But uh, I, I don't think I would say that for sure. But uh, I think at a certain point, if you have a supportive family, and a strong support system in general, and you're thriving, at a certain point, silence becomes criminal. 
what I'm doing isn't courageous, it's an obligation. People tell me a lot of times, oh, you must be, you're so courageous. I have an amazing husband, I have an amazing family, I have money and insurance, you know, I have all these benefits. And for me to continue to be quiet about it uh, is, is criminal to me. So. <laughs> Thank you all for being here again for the Dorothy C. Fuqua Lecture. We look forward to another exciting year next year. And thank you again, Rex and Duvall, for supporting this. Have a very safe trip home. Thank you.